the court. So again, so like I was saying, uh, so for about 15 years, I was a Mennonite. We uh, did a lot of cooking, canning, uh, freezer drying, free putting things in a freezer drying, and I teach classes on all those things. So like I said, on December 8th, I'll be here teaching how to make infused garlic oil, but I'll also be helping uh, teach you guys how to use other herbs and spices to create your own infused olive oils. And if you cook and you like to cook like that, um, everybody knows how expensive oil olive oil is and it is super easy to create your own infused oils so i will be doing that um, also cookbooks being passed around we talked a little bit about that but now we're going to get into the meat of this class and that is how to create beautiful charcuterie boards for your holidays or just for you know a sunday afternoon for a snack for a football game or whatever it is hockey game whatever it is um, or just a snack on and again like i was saying earlier it does not have to be elaborate it does not have to be so expensive and breaking the bank you can get a lot of you know inexpensive things decorations and stuff like i said at your local budget shops um, and oftentimes I have my own garden. So like the cherry tomatoes, the peppers, um, and those are both from my garden. Oh, welcome. We just started. Come on in. I am so sorry. You are perfectly fine. But I'm glad you just started. Yeah, well, we were just chatting. If you want to just sign this, this is for the Parks and Rec. And if you would like to be on my email list, okay. um, I send out updates on my blogs and whatnot. And then I'm having my cookbook passed around as well, too. So we're just talking a little bit about how, um, you know, you can create beautiful charcuterie boards on a budget and not break the bank. Um, so what I've done is I know you can, if has, well, first and foremost, has anybody ever made their own charcuterie boards already? Okay. So great. So as I think Rhonda said, uh, she, you know, it costs a hundred dollars, $150 to make probably one this big, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. And the board was <laughs> yeah, okay. So again, like I was saying, and which, I'm sorry, uh, your name is Nicole or Jessica? Jessica. Very good. Welcome, Jessica. I'm Jean Roman. Um, so I was showing, I have several platters and I entertain a lot and I've entertained over the years. So we are, uh, my husband and I are getting ready to retire in uh, five years. And we found our retirement home in Hilton Head, uh, Margaritaville. It's latitude is 55 and older. It is just fabulous. And so my husband's already telling me, babe, you're going to have to downsize because <laughs> I literally, well, we just did downsize because my son got a scholarship to play football over at a private school uh, in Waterford. And uh, so I came from an almost 4,000 square foot home with a 2,000 square foot barn a pole barn and seven acres to a 2,700 square foot home with a little yard. So it was, it was a lot. And I, I would have about five different Christmas trees during the season. And just my entire main floor became Frankenmuth, you know, just changed everything out. And I started in, the fall, in September. So everything goes from fall to Thanksgiving to Christmas. And so to say I have a lot of totes of decoration is probably a really big, uh, understatement. So I am getting ready to downsize, but I have things for Christmas. I have things for Thanksgiving. I have things for fall. That's pretty much the, the ones I don't decorate for Valentine's day or a lot of the other ones, but, um, those are my primary this way. It's only, you know, a few months of the year that everything changes over, but I do keep everything in totes and switch things out. But, um, when you go to budget shops and whatnot, picking up, uh, just a simple, cutting board. That's all that is. It's just a cutting board. And I've had that. I think somebody gave that to me as a gift. Probably had that for eight years. And so I have another larger cutting board that I use. I have a beautiful wood, kind of like a wood bowl. It's about that big. And I love to put like chip dips in there. So I'll put a big bowl in the middle and um, put different chips around it. I can use it for a veggie tray or whatnot. And then again, like I was saying, there's those couple samples there. You can buy themed trays like this for a couple bucks. I, I got these a few years ago at Walmart. Very, very inexpensive. And one thing you did miss, Jessica, right? Yeah, was I was telling everybody that if you go at the end of the season or for whatever it is, Valentine's, St. Patrick's, Christmas, whatever it is, and go at the end of that season, you're going to get 75% off and save that stuff in a clear tote, labeled what it is for the following year. And it's a great way to save some dollars. But um, 
what I want to show you guys today is specifically how easy it is to throw together a simple board like this. So I have, like I said, I didn't think everybody would want to uh, watch me cut veggies, but I'm going to throw this together really quickly. Oh, and then I also want to show you guys these. Uh, these are just, you know, condiment containers, dollar store, three pack for a buck. And then I went online and this was actually a Harry Potter birthday party I did for my youngest son when he was eight. And again, very elaborate. I have all the stuff for that. So these were, I had four tents and each tent was a store from Diagon Alley. If you have grandkids, uh, I'm sure you know Harry Potter. And uh, so one tent was the wand shop. One tent was the um, candy store, which is where those eyeballs came from. And uh, one tent was the wand store and one tent was the bank. And so at the candy store, or then they had an ice cream station too. And then I had three of these. So the bat's blood was strawberry syrup. Uh, I can't remember what this one was. And then one was chocolate syrup. And so I just printed these labels off the internet printed them off and then put with the uh, packing tape. So you can create super cute things by doing that as well. But, so I'm gonna start with this tray. I'm gonna move some things over. I want to make sure everybody can see. Um, oftentimes, like when I bought these crackers, I like Kroger's for a lot of things because they have a lot of sale items. And you can generally get a lot of stuff for pretty inexpensive. So this platter has some words on it and some decoration. I obviously, you know, we can't continue to see everything, but I wanted to keep the creepy. And so what I did was I kind of built around that. So in the center, I have, again, these little glass dishes, every single one. I can't remember which budget shop it was, but it's on Dixie Highway. It's not, it's... Maybe, maybe, yeah. Or Saint, or Saint, oh, what's the Saint, uh, Saint, uh, yeah, yeah. But 25 cents for these. And you go to Walmart and they're a buck, two bucks. So you can get little glass dishes like this for, and if you go to my YouTube channel or my social medias, you'll see I always uh, create like a spread of all my ingredients. And this is what I use these for. And when I teach my, when I do my YouTube cooking classes, um, I have all my ingredients in these. And again, you, they're, they're so versatile. You can use them for stacking. And these again, budget shop. So I'm gonna use that. And so because it's clear, I'm not blocking anything. So I can still put things around there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spooky eyeballs and these I actually, this was actually for Aaron's uh, Harry Potter birthday party. And I got these off of Amazon actually like six years ago, but I use them because you can put them in like punch bowls and stuff. These are actually uh, rubber balls and these ones are hard plastic. So, you know, I'm going to put those in there. Maybe put a few so that the eyeballs are sticking out. For me, some of my friends are like, oh my gosh, Jean, you're like just too much. <laughs> and I'm like, it's all about presentation for me. I love to make things just beautiful. And uh, so here we go. So I have some celery sticks. I'm going to stick those in there and just peek them through like that. And these were also from my son's uh, birthday party. They were the Harry Potter one little pens. So I had a bunch extra, so I saved them. So which is stick now? And I take some peppers. I'm going to stick those in there. You know, and obviously, if you ladies cook, you know, preparation, prep time is always the, the, the key thing. But I will say, um, to create this board, so I bought the thing of mushrooms. I went to the grocery store, and I am not spent, I didn't need a bunch of grapes. So the bags, I did. I took a little branch of what I needed of each color, put them in one bag, and spread out the other ones throughout the other bags. So I think those gra the grapes for both of these cost me two bucks, and then a bag of baby carrots. Uh, the green peppers are from my garden. Uh, you can buy the pre-cut celery or just buy the bag, you know, 99 cents, and a can of olives. Uh, the cheese, the meats are usually, but I don't buy the charcuterie ones. I do sometimes, like the ones that, the prosciutto, those, you can, I'm, not, I'm not doing all that work. Um, but um, these are just regular lunch meat salami. 
you can buy an off-brand salami, you can buy any lunch meat, and because you're buying it larger, or if you shop at Kroger's, you can buy the grab-and-goes, which is a half a pound, which is perfect. And then you can get several varieties, but I'm just using hard salami today. And then I just got Colby Jack, because most people like Colby Jack. And that was one block of it, it was on sale for $1.99 or $2.50 or something like that. And I was able to get enough. So again, nice little board right there. But let's get a few more. Pe no, because when you buy it already sliced, it's a lot more. Okay. So if you, yeah, you, I mean, you can. Again, it's how much do I want to spend? Yeah. Oh, no, no. That's a great question. Because normally, I would normally, if, if it's depending on how much I'm doing, this was just one class and one board, so I did it. But when I'm having a party party, I buy the flat trays with the three different pre-cut squares. I'm not doing all that. <laughs> Time is valuable, right, ladies? <laughs> okay. So then these, again, are my little uh, uh, cauldrons, again, from Aaron's birthday party. Had a bunch left over. I had little uh, jelly beans in them at his party, and I had extra. Some of the kids didn't take them, so I stored them for a party. So now today, they're going to be levelers. I'm going to put some olives in this bowl. Whoops. There we go. And usually what you want to do who, who gardens? Are any of you guys active gardeners? Okay, so you understand hardscaping. That's your, you know, your, your walkways, your garden, uh, like artwork and whatnot, all those hardscape things. And then you have your flat plants and stuff. Consider these things you're hardscaping. So what you're doing is you're building something, like your walkway, and then you're putting your flower beds around it, adding in your color, your perennials, and your annuals. So that's what we're doing. So then I'm going to take this one and put that one back here and I'm going to put some carrots in there. And then so I have my hardscape around and then I'm going to fill in, right? So I have my perennials and I'm filling in with my annuals. So there we go there. Set that off there. And then uh, garnishes are always pretty. I have some parsley from my garden around there and then of course a slithery snake. And so I got some kale from my garden. Well, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll take you for a tour. Um, so what I have is I have a decent sized yard and the home actually had a fenced in area that was a garden area. And I'm a raised bed gardener. So I was able to get seven four by 10 by twos, two four by 10 by ones and four round ones. Right. And then I have some old galvanized wash tubs that I have on blocks. And then I grew my potatoes in there. And then uh, we built, uh, so we had that and we put everything down, all the pea stone. And then I bought a greenhouse and I got that there. And then we built a, a patio area for our patio. And uh, so around that patio, if you see like a lot of restaurants where they have those uh, high, those two foot high raised beds. So I have those around my patio area and those will grow vegetables for next year. So I just got those. My boys are getting to fill dirt with them <laughs> in a couple of weeks. So they're so excited, trust me. <laughs> so anyways, whoops. And then I want this snake right here. So we're gonna, I will move this up so everybody can see too. So we're gonna get that snake in there and put that because this is creepy, right? We're doing creepy. Eh, let me do this. There we go. You want to touch that? Mm. And let's put some more garnish down just to add a little bit of making it just look pretty. It's all those little details that really just spruce up a board. So let's put some grapes. I almost thought about these, <laughs> these purple grapes. I thought, oh, they look like toes or claws. And I thought, oh, I should have, after, this was after the thought, right? Um, I thought I should have got like a little bit of the cream cheese and made like a little mound and then stuck those in there and make it look like a claw, but I didn't. So we're gonna put some grapes down there. And again, wash them. This is not an elaborate one. This is fairly easy, not gonna break the bank or take so much of your time that you don't have time to do anything else. One thing, my daughter, she is very creative as well. And uh, she does some beautiful charcuterie boards. And uh, so we'll put the carrots right in the front. I thought I should have got heirloom carrots and uh, had different colors, but because the tray was orange, for hindsight, right ladies? 
And let's put some mushrooms in between our slithery snake. There we go. Put those there. They're just the white mushrooms, yeah. That's a nice size. Yeah, I got the, I can't remember what size container I got, but, um, and these are cherry tomatoes. Don't eat the green ones. I just picked, I picked like a cluster of them. Uh, the, the green are tomatoes, but there's also green grapes. Uh, the red ones are ripe. Uh, I grow everything heirloom. There's that. And now let's get some green peppers over here. This is a veggie tray. So what, generally what I do is I create a veggie tray, I create a fruit tray, and I create a meat and cheese and cracker tray, uh, like I said. So I don't usually mix and match them. Sometimes I do. This one has, um, has some fruit and veggies, but do this. Do a few more mushrooms. I think that was my problem. I put everything. Fruit, meat, cheeses, and all over the world. Yeah, yeah, it can get expensive. And I, I have done that too, you know, when it's a big party. But um, I brought some crackers just to kind of intertwine it in here as well. And I'm going to turn this around so you guys can kind of. La la. Kind of see what I'm doing. Nobody has nut allergies, right? Yes, yes. And I'm going to pass it around too, and you guys can come up. Um, oh, you're welcome. Um, does anybody have any nut allergies? Because I won't put nuts on this one if that's the case. Okay. So let's do some crackers here. And there is a front and a back to a club cracker, if you didn't know. <laughs> so just saying. So put some there. And I get a lot of ideas off of Pinterest. I'm not going to say I'm always so creative. You know, what I usually do is I create, I go on Pinterest and I find things and then I adjust it to what I want to put on it. So Pinterest, if you are not on Pinterest, get a Pinterest page because it is fabulous. Let's do that. And again, like I was saying, um, your prep time cutting vegetables and whatnot is going to be, if you don't want to prep, you can actually buy trays i'm sure y'all know of pre-cut veggies and fruit that you can you know all of a sudden you got to bring something to a party or something it's like oh my god i don't have time to do all this buy that stick it all on a tray people are like oh my gosh you did such a beautiful job and you're like oh thank you <laughs> it took me days <laughs> all the planning so people will never know Yeah, yeah, it is Colby Jack. You know, I usually do. I have like a, I usually put like several varieties when I again when I'm doing it as a, as a party. But come on. And again, it's just you know your creativity, and uh, sometimes you feel stumped. Uh, go to Pinterest because it's like. The taco bar idea, that was 100% Pinterest. I was like, oh my gosh, my boys will love this because uh, we have taco nights and uh, they love their tacos. We did homemade nachos last night and uh, yeah, they're all about that. And just stick a few, fill in up the spots, you know, wherever you can. And then I'm gonna put a few other crackers, but I wanna keep that creepy. So I'm gonna put some walnuts, just scatter those around and fill in the spaces. And it just looks pretty. I love walnuts. I love pecan pie. Who loves pecan pie? Oh my God, it's so good. My grandma used to make the best pecan pie. My grandparents raised me. And oh my gosh, my grandmother was such a good cook. She always, uh, I find myself the same way. It's like whenever we have people over, it's always like, oh, did you eat enough? Did you get enough to eat? It's like, and that was always her, you know, she's like, you know, eat, eat, I cooked all this, you know, she'd make homemade, mat, you know, uh, everything. I mean, oh God, I loved her cooking. So in my cookbook actually has some of her recipes in there as well. Okay. And then, there you go. What did that take me? 10 minutes, you know? 
super easy. Like I said, the key thing is the prep time. So if you don't want to prep, buy it pre-cut. If you want to prep, you know, you just buy baby carrots. You're not cutting carrots. Um, and the mushrooms you just put out there. The only things I cut for this was the celery and the green peppers. So, and you know, the mushrooms, if you, if you do want to get them a little cheaper, you can buy whole mushrooms and cut them yourself. Um, so that is something you can do and you can add a little other element. Um, so that is that now, and everybody's gonna get a snack. That's why you got a plate and a napkin. But next thing I want to show you guys is how to make, I'm going to put this stuff over here. Okay. I want to show you guys how to make the salami rosettes. We did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make the other ladies feel bad. <laughs> All right. So there's that. Everybody can see that. There you go. Good. Okay. Very good. And then, uh, like I said, I over here, I put that there, but you don't have to. Usually what I do, um, I make all my own dressings. So I have all my recipes for ranch, for Thousand Island and whatnot. And then, like I said, I have so much stuff. I have more bowls than any one woman could ever use in her life, but I use them. <laughs> but um, so I love to use like old teacups and saucers or pretty little, just like little bowls like this. And then I'll put my, um, my butter or my salad dressings or any dips, if I have ranch or veggie dip or dill dip, whatever it is. And I put them in there and then I have pretty little uh, butter knives and then I have teeny little spoons. I should have brought those for hindsight. I'll put those all in the um, PowerPoint. So now, um, well, let me see if I have a plate in there. I'll use mine so I don't have to worry about washing theirs. I don't want to do it on the table. So the rosettes are pretty easy. I'm just going to wipe this off. Oh, absolutely. Well, how about, you know what? Why don't I come to the table? How about this? I'll do one here and I'll do one there. How about that, ladies? Okay, so there we got shot glasses, wine glasses. You can use a, a flute, like a champagne flute works really nice too. Wine glasses, if they're narrow, otherwise if you have like a really big wine glass, they kind of get too big. Um, this one right here was made with this. So I like this shape, but it's super easy. If, why don't you put your purse? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what you're gonna do again, this is just, uh, Let's, uh, I don't know the brand. So you're going to put it in there like that. Fold it down. Do another one on that side. Fold it down. Do one more on that side. Fold it down. And one more. So you're kind of doing like north, south, west, east. You can put more if you want, but you don't really need to. And then there you go. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, and I tried to make this without a shot glass. So I could do, if this is, this is not that full. If you want it to be fuller, like a full rose, just add a couple more pieces of salami. All right, let me come over here and show you guys. Super easy, folks. All this stuff, you, you will look to your friends and your family like, oh my goodness, how long did that take you? You are so fabulous. And you're like, oh, I know. <laughs> All right, so you want to go right like half, okay? So there we go, that one. And I'll do this one with a few more so you can see a little fuller one. And here we got our west and our east. There, let's go. What do you do Okay, it'll come to you. That's what I always say when I forget. I'm like, oh my gosh, this, this brain. It's like, okay, so I got my north, south, west, east. Now, if I want to make it a little bit easier, let's go southwest and, and uh, northwest, okay? So we're going to go over that. So you think about where you're, la where you're lap overlapping. So I'm going to go over the two overlaps, okay? Oh, prosciutto. I don't do those. That I buy. So there you go. And, you know, if you have gloves at home, I mean, I promise I wash my hands. There you go. Oh, yeah. And when your guests are, yes, are serving themselves, mm -hmm. 
they, they have to break it apart. <laughs> and I usually have toothpicks to break it apart. So, you know, my boys, however, they just eat the whole thing. <laughs> they eat the whole thing. Okay, so now I'm going to do the fan. I'll do one here and I'm going to do one over there. So, again, you just take a piece of salami and do it accordion style. Okay, and these are usually three. So I'm going to fold it again, accordion style. Is that? Folding it in half, accordion style. And then it's just a fan. You just lay it like that, and then people can take one, and then you just lay them like that. So pretty easy. You do it like that. Not as pretty as the roses, but it gives still a little bit of interest. You fold those in half? I did an accordion. So what we do is, and you can do as many as you want. Like if you want to do an X in it and yeah. build it out, you can do that too. Oh, sure. And that gives a really nice presentation because, so just imagine, or let's do the rows here and the rows here. Or do that. So if I have a rose here and here, and maybe another one here. And then now I'm gonna do a fan there, 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 and there, and then fill it in with your stuff. How pretty, you know? So you can do a low, uh, cheeses here, and then crackers here. Little olives, you can put olives in there, to add a little bit of interest. So just be as creative, you know, whatever you think is pretty. So folding in and out, so you're doing an accordion. Oh, okay. And then folding down, and then like that again. In that way and that way. So, nice. and there we go. Could you do like a sandwich? You could do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. One hundred percent. How cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sandwich words. And that's actually I do have um, a sample of that in my stuff. But yeah, we're I have never done it though personally. But that's actually good for boys. I'm always thinking what is good for my boys because my son is turning sixteen. Uh, the sixteenth. So not this coming Monday, the following. But uh, so we're, when Michigan, Michigan State plays, I'm having his friends over and I'm going to do spooky taco bar and, you know, kind of football themed with all my stuff, but kind of make it spooky. Uh, but that's a great idea. I was, I'm going to have to ask Evan what he wants because we're going to do a taco bar and he'll probably still pick taco and nachos. But um, yeah, you could definitely do that. Then you could have, and especially even a four foot table like this, just a card table, get a cool tablecloth, put some boards on it and some bowls, tear it up. Tearing is key to making things look pretty. So you can kind of see like, you know, like I put the spider up on there, I put him. I probably should have brought a few other things where I could have like elevated, but think about elevation. You know, think about elevation and making that attractive. And one good way to, when you think about stuff like that is um, think about grocery stores. Like for me at my farmer's market with all my produce, I actually have my table like this, and then I have a row of crates on the back that I put a tablecloth on. And then I have baskets tipped up, and then baskets down there tipped up. So when, think about a grocery store. When you go to the vegetable aisle, everything's tiered and tipped, right? So when people come to the farmer's market, they want it to look like the, farm, like the grocery store because that's what they're used to, but they want to feel good and happy that they're spending their money at the local farmer's market. So... When you're presenting, think about like that. If you're doing a table up against the wall, like when I did my son's uh, Harry Potter birthday party, their ice cream was there. So again, I tiered, I had three levels, you know, to where I already had all their ice cream scoops in a pre-bowl, so I didn't have to do that. Everything was already measured out. So all they had to do, I had all the sprinkles, all the nuts, all the syrups, everything, and it was a station. So get their ice cream, their toppings and the next toppings or whatever, and they can do it in an assembly line. But tearing it up just made it look so much prettier. So think about that, just like how we did here. You know, these, the back things are tiered up and then large, so that people can, it's visually more appealing to everybody. So, any questions? Oh, we got 10 minutes. <laughs> Should have done another board. Ask me questions, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay, so like if I was going to do that, 
I would go to Pinterest and then I would get some ideas from there. But I would probably have baskets. I love baskets. And I would put like a linen cloth in it, themed for whatever it is. Put your breads in there. So if you got a rye bread, a white bread, a whole wheat bread, dinner buns, you know, sliders, whatever it is going to be, individualize those. And I love to put tags and labels. So like if I would have brought more of these, I would have created little tent cards and wrote fancy um, and put like ranch, you know, veggie dip or whatever it would be. And I would do that and have everything labeled. So what you could do is do a little tent card and then pay, uh, get those cute little craft uh, clips, put that on there so that, okay, this is rye bread. Nobody has to ask. And then same with when I do my dips and stuff in my teacups or my little bowls, I always have a tent card saying what's in it. And so you'll see that on the PowerPoint presentation that I'll send out from my wedding reception because I had a, like a salad and then I had all different kinds of dips. We did barbecue and so there were different sauces and whatnot. And so, and then we had a big dessert table. That's another thing. Um, so we had, you know, cupcake, uh, cake platters and cupcakes. Well, I have five cake plates that are all different sizes and I tear them, I stack them up. And so on those, I had different kinds of cookies and I made cute little tent cards, you know, oatmeal, chocolate chip. And then I had my cupcake holders and I had all the cupcakes on there. So you do dessert tables for, especially for Valentine's day or whatever. Um, you can do a sandwich board, but, and then I would do like a cool wooden, uh, cutting board and then layer my meats there. But I would do meat, cheese, meat, cheese, and always start in the center. So if you're going to do three rows of meat or three rows of cheese, start in the center, build it down and then work out and go opposite. So meat, cheese, meat, cheese, meat like that. And always do things in, in odd numbers. If you look at decorating styles and everything. So again, here I have three bowls, two, it just looks off. So you always want to do things in odd number of things. And, um, so yeah, you could do Valentine's day. You could do, uh, but with the sandwich board too, you could have like, and then I would have like a pretty glass platter like this with beautiful, and I would not buy uh, head lettuce. I'd buy the red and the green leaf lettuce and then do a red leaf, a green leaf, a red leaf, a green leaf. And then I would have slices of tomatoes. And if you can get heirloom tomatoes, so beautiful and so delicious, do a row of slices of uh, tomatoes. And then your onions, get a yellow, a white, and a red onion. And then red, white, yellow, or I put the red in the middle. So I'd go yellow, red, white, and there's your toppings. Then your condiments, so your relish, your cup of mustard. I'd have different kinds of mustards and having those. Don't ever put the plastic bottles on the counter. You know, you always want to have them in pretty dishes. And then with cute little spoons. I got these ones off of uh, Amazon. They're like a cherry or a mahogany color, and they're just teeny little spoons, but they're perfect for like the size of a bowl. And I got them at I got them off of Amazon. I think I got a dozen of them, six of them for like five bucks. So it was, and they're so cute. What are some other kind of dips you can do? Oh, veggie dip. You can do a dill dip. Um, you can do, uh, I actually usually have fruit dips too for my, I have a chocolate, uh, like a cream cheese one, and then a caramel dip. So I always have those three dips for my cheese, or for my, I'm sorry, for my fruit. But for the veggies, I always have a dill dip a ranch dip, and then a, like a traditional Marzetti's like a, a veggie dip, which is kind of like a sour ranch. But some of them are, but not all of them. No, you can find a lot of those recipes at my blog. I'm actually working on my second cookbook right now, which hopefully will be ready for the holidays. Do you do jelly at all? Oh, yeah. Like a red pepper? Oh, I thought you meant do I can. I'm like, yeah, I, I can them. But no, I've never done a jelly. That'd be a good yeah, idea too. I added that to my yeah. Yeah. My yeah. <laughs> my, mine does too. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. Well, and what else? Do you guys have any other suggestions? Like, you know, you're asking what kinds of other veggie dips, but do you guys have any other suggestions? Like, what would you put out here? I mean, look, time to share. <laughs> I never made one before. Okay. So are you inspired to? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Do you feel like it's, it seems more like feasible to get done? Good, good, good. And yeah, and definitely in your, your uh, sheet here, it's got, um, you know, your tips. Different for, yeah, different ideas. So like how, you know, the, the different steps of it too. So like what you want, you know, the, 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 bulk, the, the meat of the product is your meats, your cheeses, your accompaniments. Uh, so like olives, pickles, you can buy those little pickles, um, that kind of stuff. 
honey, mustards, different things, dried fruits, nuts, and then breads and crackers. So you could even have like a spinach dip. Uh, you get, if you get like one of those round loaves of rye bread and cut out the center and put your spinach dip in there. And if you don't want the bread to get soggy, you can actually uh, just put the bowl right in there, the container. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I used to work at McDowell. Uh-huh. Yeah. And well, we, we did trees all the time. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say use that bowl, the bread as the bowl, but then put all the cubes of uh, crackers and other breads around it. Um, I do that with that big wooden uh, bowl. And I would have brought that today, but it's piled high with gourds as a decoration right now. And I was like, oh, I don't wanna take all that apart. <laughs> um, and then garnishes. So like I said, I have some parsley from my garden here and it just adds that little bit of, you know, it adds just a little bit of color and makes it pretty. Yeah, the honey here now, would that be like on fruit? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have it in something to drizzle it? Or? No, usually stuff, I mean, you could, you could definitely, but I really use these bowls a lot and teacups. I have this antique um, cabinet in my dining room. It was actually from an old mechanic shop where it has all the drawers where they've kept parts in. And I keep all my little stuff like that in there. So my teacups and my saucers and all those kind of things. But again, it's, it's really, what do you have? how creative do you want to be and you know how much how much you want to clean up <laughs> but yeah so definitely you can use any of those things but you can also like um you know how they have those little wooden things where it has this like got the cuts in it for the honey you could put that in there how cute right You're like that's so traditional and then if you have if you can find i actually have a big bee skep uh and you could put that so you know any you can use all different things. And if you have, I, like I said, I have a ton of bowls. I like to use my bowls. I flip one over like this and then tear up another one. And then in spring for Easter and stuff, I have all kinds of pastel color bowls and tablecloths and I do that. And then I have some like wooden rabbits and, and different things that I scatter around the table. Um, but then also, you know, your accompaniments can be like olives, pickles, mustards, honey, dried fruits, nuts. Um, also, um, trying to think other things off the top of my head that I didn't may not have included and then um, also and then you know thinking about what are you going to start with what are you going to use so what do you have at home you know do you have some cutting boards do you have a big cutting board do you have little cutting boards I have cutting boards of all sizes uh, do you have glass platters do you have plastic platters uh, melamine whatever um, do you have separated bowl platters like that do you have you know round flat platters so anything you have you can utilize as a board. Um, it is really, really wherever your creativity takes you. And again, use Pinterest, just Google charcuterie boards and believe me, you'll come up with a, a ton of stuff. Um, and then, like I said, you know, opt for local and artisan products. Um, I like to do, I shop at the farmer's market as well as participate as a vendor, but it is, if you, you know, if you want to support your local farmers and buy some jams and jellies from them, they will often have stuff like that. You can buy mixed nuts from them. There's a lot of different things that you can get from them, bagels and whatnot, cream cheeses. Um, you know, and then if you really want to be really elaborate for my wedding reception, I bought these little like mason jugs. They were just like one ounce or two ounce. And then I made all my homemade strawberry jam. And then I had these little craft tags with raffia. And so I put, you know, D and J and then our date. And I tied that onto the little handle. And then I filled them with my strawberry jam. And that was everybody's favor. So yeah, just again, those little touches, you know, and some, like I said, some of my friends like, oh my gosh, Jean, you're just too much. I'm like, but when you decorate your home, you know, you add all your personal touches, right? You know, you have your family pictures. If you like baskets, you may decorate with baskets. If I love to garden, I'm a major gardener. And so my house is decorated a lot with botanical prints. So those things all, everything that you have, your decorate your home and your garden, well, you can use when you decorate your tables, you know, both for the holidays and for just a party, whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Another idea. Yeah, yeah, please. Make a tree okay. Easter. Okay. Yep. Okay. I bought the tray, mm -hmm. the little cup that goes yeah. with it, mm -hmm. did it myself, did it myself, mm -hmm. and I could leave it. Yeah. It was normal. Yeah. 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 You didn't have to worry about taking your dish home. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wonderful idea. Any other tips and tricks from you other gals? I like that your dad is um, wines. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, depending, you know, if it's one of my kids parties, obviously, you know, we have the, we have the adult party table over there and then we have the kids, kid friendly table over here, <laughs> but you know, you can get uh, different fun things for the kids, but yeah, especially if you're doing like a meat and cheese, pairing it with a different wine and you can Google, you know, what wine goes best with salami, what wine goes best with sharp cheddar or whatever it is. But um, yeah, it, again, you can, you can incorporate, and if you don't want alcohol, you do sparkling wines or sparkling, uh, grape juices and stuff like that. So that's totally, um, you know, optional to what you want to have. So, yeah. And then, uh, and again, they're, you know, making skewers, those are super cute too. Um, you can do fruit skewers and you can buy, you know, the skewer packages, the smaller ones to the larger ones. If you buy, if you can't find the smaller ones, you can cut carefully the larger ones and, uh, put fruit, make fruit kebabs, fruit and cheese. Those are so cute. And then again, think about displaying them. And so say you have this platter and you want to do a strip of cheese, you want to do a strip of meat and then some, uh, uh, skewers or if you have like a really cool like a tall like a vase even flower vases that's not too too tall but just high you can put those in there and make it look like a bouquet kind of like uh was that edible arrangement stuff so I mean look around your house I was like ah oh, you know what I could use that for this or I could use that for that so believe me you probably have so many things in your homes already that you can utilize for that but if there's no more questions or ideas I would love for you ladies to enjoy a little of the sampling if you would like to. I gave everybody a napkin and a plate there, so please feel free, no obligation. And uh, but if you want a little snack, please please feel free. And if anybody would like my cookbook, you can let me know. But I do want to say thanks to everybody for coming on out today. It was a pleasure meeting all you gals, and I hope to see you at my next class.